think one of the reasons that it's so important and so you know exciting that we're here today is really to make sure that people do understand that there's a lot they can do themselves about you know dealing with a diagnosis of polycystic ovaries you know which means that you you take care of your of your diet you make sure that your your sugar levels are balanced that you you don't really have any ups and downs of your insulin curve that you are that you you, you your diet is is conscious of that and it can be managed beautifully in 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 that sense and and doesn't need to be any concern um you know for for well-being because the you know the 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 severeness of the polycystic ovaries is definitely the young age because you know when you are young you have lots of eggs like we said earlier you know we are born with the amount of eggs when the time of our own birth so as we grow older the the effect of the lot of uh, of eggs and the polycystic is getting so earlier we care the earlier we don't allow our body to to slip into this um, mode of insulin resistance the better because the the problem is also that you know you do not have significant symptoms of that i mean other than you know weight weight gain and it's just something that um is is usually uh you know very subtle it's not from one day to the next you um you know experience horrendous symptoms so it needs awareness and it needs really a conscious approach and um and, you know and one thing that would really help uh, wonderfully is really to measure your your blood sugar levels so that would be you know a, a direct um parameter of of seeing where do i stand and what am i doing with what i'm eating am i doing the right thing you know we might you know pay and say oh dor i'm eating very healthy i have every day you know my my little biscuit and i have my coffee and i have a glass of milk and people think that they're really eating healthy Louis. so healthy eating helping your body is also something that um you know would would uh, need a lot of education yeah and i mean each of us to reacts assist, uh, patients to to know what they're doing yeah now i was just going to say that each of us differently. reacts differently um but as sort of a, a general measure and general advice, we should really be avoiding sugar and refined carbohydrates, right? And starch, essentially, to keep our insulin in check. Absolutely. And yeah, but there we also, you know, that's where we also victims of our advertising, you know, industry around us, because, you know, we get suggestive, uh, you know, icons everywhere, or if it's in, in newspapers or in, in you know, in, in uh, advertisement between, um, you know, entertainment programs on television, you know, we always get suggested that, you know, eating um, processed carbohydrates is a good thing. And it's definitely not because it's really like a, it's like a sugar tsunami on your poor pancreas. Because if we want to say, you know, what is insulin resistance, you know, it's something that maybe all of you not aware of it, it just basically means, you know, that the the fat cells, the muscle cells, and the liver cells, they are not responding to the insulin um, as, as much as they should. Insulin is a hormone that gets released from the pancreas, and it's responsible for the uptake of sugar into the cells in order to produce energy for our body. So if I have like, you know, a, a sugar load of, of processed carbohydrates coming in, and my cells can actually not respond to the insulin, that means you have all this sugar circulating in your bloodstream. And, you know, if this is happening on a, on a continuous um, long-term basis, you will end up with increased sugar levels and, you know, pre-diabetes and diabetes. And this is something that is totally avoidable if you, you know, take your measures in time.